I've got a Flow X2 here from the Pivot Factory team, um, and I'm just going to take you through how, at a race, either me or Schmitty would go through the shock, give it a freshen up, um, ready for race day. So first of all, we need to take the settings, so you always count to closed, which is clockwise. And then open them back up, ready for the service. Next, we'll take the air pressure, so we can reinstate the air pressure to save the mechanics a little bit of time on their end. Once we've finished the service, then release the air pressure slowly. So I just like to crack the Schrader valve. If you do this too quickly, the body will pull itself all the way in. So it's just got to be slow release of the air and then nip up the valve core. Then we remove the outer air can, so you have to pull back slightly and then a pick in there and remove the clip then you can push it forward you've got to line up the groove the little lip there push it forward off she comes and we've got three volume spacers so we'll note that down we'll put these off pop them over here for later clean off any oil then take our shaft clamps Put them on into the vise. Personal favourite tool, Nipex pliers. And then we'll loosen the eyelet and then flip her on the B side. And then we need to loosen the air seal head. If you're going to use this tool, you've got to be really careful. The Fox tool has protective plastic to stop you damaging the cashew mark. Bit the way. Shaft clamps off. Now we can unscrew the eyelet fully like so. Give it a wipe out inside. Now we need to clamp the shaft to remove the eyelet from the shaft. Shaft clamps in the vise. Give them a little clean. Same with the shaft to make sure it grips. Shaft comes off. Then inside, got washer and the bump stop. Inner air can slides off. Pop that out of the way for later. And I can give this a clean out. Resi cap off with a six mil Allen key. depressurized reservoir again I just like to crack the valve core with a key push the cap out the way and pop the clip down out she comes spring clip and the resin cap at this point I always nip up the valve core because if we don't do it now I forget and then repressurize at the end of the service and take the pump off and all the air jumps out again And then we'll take the air piston off. This shocker believes aerated, so you might see some fizzy oil escaping. Put that out. Tip out the oil. Leave that in there just to drip. And then push the IFP back down in the reservoir itself. Tip out any oil. Get the IFP out. I like to use an old uh, DHX2 seal head. Pop that into the seal. Get an old cloth to cover up the reservoir, and then pop her out. There's the IFP. And then that off. And we'll clean out any old grease and oil. And inspect the seal. We don't usually replace many seals at a race because we're seeing the socks so often. So we'll just inspect them, make sure they're all okay. And then 
a little bit of IPA just to clean out any old oil from the shock and then tip that out leave that to drip and then separate the tube from the piston and seal head again we'll inspect the piston for any wear or damage and that looks all fine what we'll do is we'll just grab a new o-ring to replace this seal here with a new poly o-ring just helps a bit with aeration one last wipe out to make sure there's no isopropyl alcohol left in there seal head pop some grease around the seal slide that back over the body and wipe off any excess take some R3 five weight oil and we pour that in and just let it to fill up the reservoir using gravity and then I will move the adjusters and usually see a little bit of air rise up through the reservoir there we go and a little twist on the low speed just to be safe Take the inner tube, give it a clean and then just inspect the inside surface for any damage or scores. We're all good. And reinstall with a click. Let her overflow and I'll reinstall the IFP and then top off the shock with oil. Piston and seal head popper in. I like to give it a roll just to get it full of oil. Move it down. You can feel when it hits the seal as it gets tight. And then nip it up. There we go. Get rid of the overflow. And then now we need to set the IFP height. I do it through the bleed screw so pop it in a vise like this, take a 2 mil bleed screw out, screwed into the syringe, screw that on, a little bit of oil just to make sure any air doesn't get back into the shock, I'll stroke the shaft a few times. You usually see a few small bubbles. get a lot of air you've done it wrong yep happy with that so shaft back out to full extension IFP setting tool preset push the IFP up and then just move it around here we go and then we remove the little syringe tool because it's fresh oil we can put it back into the tub Lead screw back in, a little bit of lube on top of the IFP, tiny little bit, and then reinstall the resi cap, just put a little bit of grease around the seal, pop her back in, just visually check that that clip is fit correctly, shock pump, reinflate to 150 PSI. Cool. Resi cut back in with your 6mm Allen key. Nipped up. And I'll just give it a clean down on the outside. There's some alcohol. Then at this point, before I refit the air can, I'll just check by hand. You usually can feel if you've got it wrong or if there's any air in there. Yep, I'm happy with that. So, inner air can, just make sure that all the little grooves are clean of any dirt. Like I said earlier, we don't, unless a rider or a mechanic complains about a leak, don't usually change the seals. And then some grease from a Q-tip on the quartering. 
and then refit the air can. And I'll pop a little bit of float fluid to lubricate the seals on the inside and screw it home by hand. I'll tighten that up properly in a minute. Pull it down just to the top of the seal head inside. Back to our 9mm shaft clamps. A little clean and a little clean. Reuse the bump stop and then clean up the washer. Usually you'll find little bits of old Loctite from the thread. Put that back on and clean out the eyelet. Make sure she's all okay. Yep. A little bit of Loctite on the threads. I look back on and nip her up. And again on this side of the piston, a bit of float fluid aid with lubrication. Screw everything together. Back to the soft jaws. Being careful again not to damage the cashew Nip everything up. Outer air can. Give it a clean inside and a quick inspect and then, oh, don't forget your volume spacers. Give them a white, clip them back together. When you're refitting on the 2019 shocks, you need to line this groove here up with a notch. So you pop it on sort of orientated and then just have a quick check to get it lined up correctly and pop her home. Spring clip, give it a wipe because it does get covered in dirt. Back in the vise, make sure it's pulled back and it should just clip straight back in and then push it forward so it can't pop out the groove. Double check that I remember to tighten the valve core and then we just need to pump her up equalize it on the hand dyno. So I usually stick 100 psi in before we got the hand dyno. Let's pop on the hand dyno and we're just going to equalize the positive and negative chambers. So you can see just now we've got 102 in there. We pull down on the handle, we get a little hiss and the pressure drops a bit. And then we just keep pumping and equalizing until we get to 170, which is what it came in with. Valve cut back on to keep any dirt or debris out of the valve core. And then just once more clean off. We just need to reinstate the settings that it came in with. So we go fully close the clickers clockwise and then First click is one and count open. Close the high speed rebound, and then grab our three mil for the low speeds. Once again, fully close the clicker clockwise. First click's one. If you're doing this and the clickers feel gritty, be really careful. Maybe give them a spray out with uh, compressed air because um, you don't want to get them stuck together if you turn them too far and um, you've got to be quite gentle with them. So when you're adjusting the low speed um, adjusters you got to be really careful that you don't turn them too far. You can lock um, the high speed and the low speed together um, and if you turn them too far past the stop you can damage the uh, adjuster internally. The little piece of metal can shear off and then it's floating around in your damper, it can hold shims open, cause all sorts of other damage. So be really careful with your clickers, don't force them. When you get to the end, that's the end. There's no extra clicks. Um, reinstate the settings, we've repressurized. So, put a check mark on the service card and then just make a note for when we do a race report um, what we did to this shop um, so we can feed back to head office. And then we'll pop it in the finish pile and uh, move on to the next shop.